Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Lorenzo's Lessons of Space. In the previous episode I showed that going straight up will not end you up in orbit, it will just fall you back down again. In this episode I will show how to get into orbit and how to stay there. On the previous video I got some comments, uh, I was expecting maybe questions on uh, other space matters or uh, pointing out errors that, that I may have made. Instead it was a request for a picture of my face. So to get that out of the way, here's a picture of my face. Right. I'm sure you've all enjoyed that tremendously. And now it's time to load up the game. And Once again it's my favorite program, Kerbal Space Program. And you can get a free demo at www.kerbalspaceprogram.com. You can play around with it yourself. To get into orbit this time, I'm gonna make a rocket. It will be slightly different than the last one but it will look fairly similar. It will have, uh, similar to real-life rockets, it will have a small upper stage that will be used for flying around in orbit. It will have a large second stage that will uh, be used for most of the trip through the atmosphere and it will have a set of boosters to help it get off the launch pad. So, while I'm building this rocket, I will explain to you what we'll be trying to do. Orbiting is basically nothing more than circling the planet and doing it in space. Why do we do it in space? Because in space there's no air to slow us down. Uh, there is gravity in space. Many times people ask me, uh, Lorenzo, is there... Uh, when, once you're in space, once you can't breathe, there's no gravity, right? Wrong. There is basically almost always gravity. You have to go really far and really fast not to be in the, under the influence of gravity. For now, just keep in mind, gravity has nothing to do with air. Air is just trapped in the gravity well, just like you are, just like everything on the planet is. Gravity extends far further out than the atmosphere. So I'm going to fast forward now to launch the rocket, and then we can see what happens. And there we are, and lift off. So just as before, for the first bit we're going to go straight up. And in real life, if you've ever seen a rocket launch, it will start to pitch over almost immediately. This is in reality, of course, to protect the people, the good people of the launch pad, the spectators and the city that might be next to it. Should something go wrong, should something fall off the rocket, it will not impact the city. In the game, fortunately, we do not have these concerns and we can just go straight up for the first bit, get us through that thick bit of the atmosphere before starting to go sideways. And sideways we will go. Um, in the previous video I launched straight up and I made the analogy of a tennis ball being thrown just straight up into the air and, as you will know, it will just fall back down again. To get into orbit you have to go sideways, and you have to go sideways really fast. If just going up and down is a tennis ball, then going into orbit is a bit like serving. You still throw up the tennis ball a bit, get it out of the atmosphere, but then you hit it and it goes forward really fast. But of course you can't hit a tennis ball into orbit, but we have a little bit more than a, than a racket, we have a rocket. And as you can see the rocket is banking and it's starting to go sideways already. It's only about 15 kilometers up yet, but it's already almost 45 degrees pitched over. This is because in the game the atmosphere ends at 70 kilometers, which is not all that high. It's quite easy to get up that high. But we have to go sideways at about 2.5 kilometers per second, which is a fairly decent clip, so we have to start getting up to speed, getting that horizontal speed up right away. We start that right away, and then we'll see if we end up in a circle. So how is it that going up just leads to you falling straight back down again, as you would expect through gravity? But if you go sideways, you stay, you stay in orbit, you stay in space. Why do you not fall down again then? That's a very good question. And the answer is quite unintuitive. You are falling. When you're in orbit, basically wha all you're doing is falling. You're falling all the time. That's why it's also called free fall sometimes. And when there people are referring to zero gravity, they're actually referring to free fall and weightlessness because they're actually not in zero gravity. They're in a very strong planetary gravity field. Imagine now for me a line and put that over a circle. And if you're going straight along that line, if you look at the circle, the circle is the planet of course, uh, the distance between the line as you move along it and the circle increases. Uh, you gain altitude by going straight over it. And the trick to orbiting is going fast enough over the planet, so you go down the line fast enough, that the rate the planet pulls you down is the same as you would 
as the, the distance between the line and the circle would increase. So while you're falling, you're basically constantly falling over the edge of the planet. It cannot get it cannot pull you closer because you're speeding away from it. You're falling and falling and falling, but the, the planet, uh, in our case Earth, in the game it's Kerbin, the planet just curves away under you, and because it's a circle, this goes on and on and on. And the rocket is now almost up in orbit. At least it's fairly high. We'll see if it's in orbit. We can go to the game's map view, and it will draw the trajectory. And we'll see how good of a job I did launching it. And there we are on the map view. As you can see, the trajectory is fairly circular, and uh, the apoapsis, it, that mean, just means the highest point, is about at about 300 kilometers. And as we can see, the orbit still intersects the planet. So as of now, we're not quite into orbit, but almost. You can almost see the, the, the circle going through the planet, it's just, just going under the surface for a few kilometers. So we need a little bit more rocket power, and we'll be in space forever, or at least until we decide to come back down. And now that we're at least in space, not quite yet in orbit, it's a good time to explain how to maneuver, because that's not quite straightforward either. If you look at the nav ball, it's the navigation instrument, in the center bottom of the screen, and the bit in the middle, the, the crooked line and the dot, that's the, that's the way the, the nose of the ship is pointing. And because there's no air, that's not necessarily the way the ship is also going. You can spin around freely, and uh, that can be confusing. Fortunately, there's the yellow marker, and it's on the r top right side of the nav ball as of now, and that's actually the heading of the ship. So now it's going through space quite sideways. Uh, there's an, uh, the yellow marker is called the prograde marker, it means pointing in the direction where we're going. There's also a yellow marker with a cross in it, that's the retrograde marker, and as you might expect, that's where the, uh, that's the way you're not going, the way you're coming from. So right now we're pointing straight at the prograde marker, we're moving in the direction the ship is pointing as the sun comes up, and the retrograde marker will be at the bottom of the ship. So we're just going to fast forward a little bit now to the highest point of our orbit, and then try and do a rocket burn to make, it, to make us stay in space, to make us not fall back to the planet. So here we are at about 300 kilometers of altitude, well in space, and we're going to perform a rocket burn. We're going to perform this burn prograde, so we're accelerating in the direction we're going, and we're going to see what that does to our orbit. And here goes the rocket engines. Yeah, there they go. And you can see the fuel is almost gone. Fortunately, we have our small upper stage, so we can do some orbital maneuvering yet. But first, let's see what this does. There goes. And there the engines burn out. So now we can go back to the map view and have a look. And there we are, well in orbit. Now we have a periapsis marker, that means the lowest point. Apoapsis means highest point, it's Alt Greek. And we have a highest point of about 300 kilometers and a lowest point of 279 kilometers, so it's about a circular 300 kilometer orbit. And because this is well above the atmosphere, which ends at 70, there is no air drag, we're not slowing down, and just this, 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 this just can keep on going. As you remember, we are now going in a, in a trajectory that's so fast that the planet actually curves away just as quickly as it can attract us. So we're falling, we're falling straight down, but we're also, well, we're not falling straight down at all, but we're being attracted straight down, but we're going sideways so fast that we're never going to actually hit the planet. And as we accelerate time a little bit, you can actually see this in action. We're circling around the planet, not getting any closer. We are being attracted. So, because if you can imagine, we are moving to the other side of the planet. It is attracting us in that way. So, and when we're on the other side, it does it again. So that makes us go in a circle, and because there is no end to a circle, that just keeps on going. Now another quirky thing of how orbits work like that is that speed and height and altitude are almost inextricably linked. A certain, and we're talking about circular orbits now, a certain altitude will have a mandatory speed 
uh, link to it. And of course, the reverse is true. When you reach a, a, def a certain speed, your orbit becomes the altitude corresponding to that speed. We're now orbiting at about 380 by 300 kilometers. We're doing it about at about 2 kilometers a second. If we are to accelerate, we will not go through this circle faster. We will instead move to a higher circle. This is, you can sort of imagine an orbit uh, like a NASCAR racetrack where the cars go round and round and round. Except that when you accelerate, you don't necessarily go that much faster. You just move to the outside of the of the of the curve. And this is, of course, because as you imagine going over that line, having the planet curve away below you, and when this rate of uh, curving away equals the rate of being pulled down, you're in a certain altitude. You, if you go faster, uh, the planet curves away below you more, and that's just another way of saying you go higher. Now. One thing that does not happen is that if you fire your engines, you just magically teleport to a higher spot. That does not happen. Instead, your orbit on the other side of the planet than where you are performing your burn raises. This is because you increase the speed, and of course it takes a bit of time to gain the altitude. And through mathematics you can tell this will always happen exactly on the other side of the planet. So, we just raised our orbit to about 700 kilometers on the one side and here we're going to perform another burn and observe what that does to our lowest point of the orbit. So we are now pointed retrograde, we're in fact turning back to the planet. And the funny upshot of this is if you want to maneuver in orbit, if you want to raise or lower your orbit, you're always accelerating or braking. You're never just pointing at the sky and turning, uh, burning your rocket engines or pointing at the ground and burning your rocket engines. Now, if you want to go higher, you have to accelerate. And if you want to go lower, you brake. And another unintuitive thing here is that a higher orbit, even though you reach it through accelerating, actually has you moving slower. Even though you're stepping on the gas and expending energy to go faster, uh, this speed translates into height and it takes of course energy to climb out of the gravity well of the planet so unintuitively by accelerating you will actually go slower but do so at a higher altitude conversely by braking you will actually go faster but you'll be doing it lower yeah let that sink in for a while And now we have done a rocket burn that puts our periapsis, the lowest point, at about 3 kilometers, which isn't very high at all, well inside the atmosphere. So what's going to happen now is the spacecraft will hit the air, and unlike in space where there's no air to slow you down, the air is pretty good at slowing you down. You will get friction, you will encounter serious g-forces. In real life, the, pla the, the spacecraft will also get really hot. In the game this is not yet simulated, so it's fairly safe to do uh, re-entry just by going through the atmosphere. We don't have to worry about it. Our astronaut this round, time around is Bill, Bill Kerman. He knows nothing of this and is scared shitless. But Here he goes, and we're at 60 kilometers now, going at just over 2.5 kilometers a second. So we're really slamming into the atmosphere. So that's about my explanation as best as I can do it about what an orbit is and how to raise and or lower it. Uh, I hope you understood this. Um, if not, you can feel free to leave a comment or send me an email. You can do that at mail at donlorenzo.eu. That's mail at donlorenzo.eu. Uh, I'll be traveling to Stockholm for a week, so I'll be away for a bit. But afterwards, I'll be exploring what, uh, what actually uh, zero G and escape velocity concepts like that, what they actually are and what they mean in rocketry and how to uh, how to design rockets to account for that, if at all. Um, so we are just w observing the spacecraft slowly breaking, it's getting into the thick part of the atmosphere now and I will leave you to enjoy this in a slightly fast-forwarded manner. If you have any questions regarding this subject or you want me to explore uh, uh, a specific, a specific aspect of spaceflight or something else. Maybe you've got a, a, an interesting conundrum, a question, something you're wondering about. You can put it in the comments or send me an email. Mail at donlorenzo.eu. I'll also put that in the uh, in the description of this video. Uh, lastly, I'll 
advertise this wonderful game once more. It's Kerbal Space Program. It's currently available for $23 at their own website. It's www.kerbalspaceprogram.com, also in the description. And there is a free demo available, so if you just want to play around with rockets, you absolutely can, and I highly recommend it. This was Lorenzo of Lorenzo's Lessons of Space. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, show it to your friends, show it to your mom, show it to that friend that tells you you can breathe in space or that there's no gravity in space or whatnot. Show them right by showing this video. Have a nice time. I'm off.